It's five o'clock in the afternoon and the inmates of Beersheva prison are being counted for the fifth time today. They're all Palestinians, prisoners in Israel's highest security jail. Those held here are regarded by Israel as the most dangerous terrorists in their custody, men with blood on their hands. They describe themselves as freedom fighters and now prisoners of war. For both sides, it's a daily battle of wits and words. Locked up together for 24 hours a day, guards and inmates are forced into a complex, surprising dialogue, unlike any other between Israelis and Palestinians. I don't hate them. They define me as their enemy. They are defined as the enemy. Maybe tomorrow we'll make peace. For the first time, Israel's prison service has allowed cameras unrestricted access behind their bars. An Israeli officer and a convicted terrorist kill time. Both have lots of it. In the past, these two men would only have come eye to eye at the end of a rifle sight. Now, they're offered a unique chance to learn about each other at close quarters. Outside the prison walls, the momentum towards peace and the creation of an independent Palestinian state gathers pace. But inside Israeli jails, there are still 10,000 prisoners accused of crimes against Israel. Since the beginning of the Second Intifada four and a half years ago, the number held by the prison service has increased by over seven times. <laughs> the main wings at Beersheva house eight men to every cell. For up to four hours a day, they're allowed outside. For the rest of the time, they live in a 15 by 24 foot space. They have to get on. If the prisoners behave, they're granted certain privileges by the administration. They've ten channels of TV. They're allowed to study Hebrew open university courses and can buy and cook their own food. 
Everything in these cells is bought with funds sent in by Palestinian political factions like Fatah, Hamas and Islamic Jihad. For them, it's a means of retaining loyalty. This is Ali Muslimani, a veteran of the Fatah party. Aged 47, he spent nearly half his life in prison. Like many Palestinians, he has family members who are also in jail. A year ago, he was reunited with his son, Allah. It's very difficult for a father to see his son in prison. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Prison is all about brutality. It's a hard, tough life. If it was your son, how would you feel? You'd want the best for him. I want him to have a normal life. It was a shock for me to see him here, but it was also a pleasant surprise, because then I could be with him. I am prisoner Ali Badr al-Muslimani, born in Jerusalem. I am sentenced to life imprisonment for struggling against the occupation and forming a group to fight the occupying army and settlers. Ali is serving his second sentence, this time life, for the killing of an Israeli woman. Having tried to escape twice, he's regarded as a high-risk prisoner. Today, the guards have locked up an extra prisoner in the cell. But there aren't enough beds so he has to sleep on a damp floor. Ali leads the negotiation. When negotiations break down, the threat of going on hunger strike is the prisoner's main weapon. But the guards can bargain with privileges, granting or withholding them at will. The reality of prison life is very different in terms of our struggle. Outside, resistance means guns and rifles. But in here, it's about dialogue and negotiation, about determination and principles. In prison, we believe our problems can only be solved through dialogue. Despite the differences between guards and prisoners, dialogue does result in give and take. On this occasion, Ali's cellmates are given the tools to repair the damp floor. The Palestinian prisoners not only have to find compromises with the Israelis, most of the men in Beersheba are from Fatah, the majority nationalist party. Alongside them are militant fundamentalists from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Outside, these factions are bitterly divided about whether to negotiate with the Israelis at all. But here, they present a united front to the administration. At Friday prayers, the guards are especially vigilant. While freedom to worship is a right for all prisoners and helps maintain order, the guards will draw the line if the sermon becomes overtly political. When you live in the prison, it's something like you live in a different world. 
I mean, I know that this guy is a murderer and the bomb bus and the murder children and the women. You just have to put it away from, from your mind because if you think about it, it, it's impossible to work. We try not to get close to a difficult subject like uh, the situation in Israel and the fight between the Arabs and the uh, Israeli. This is a uh, taboo. So we try to talk about something else. I mean, uh, children, how to raise children, what's going on with the women those days, and uh, how they trade. The, I mean, everything, every, every other subject, not, not about uh, the hot subject. Yeah, and there is no need for this, but what to do? For recently recruited guards and new prisoners, this is the first time they've come face to face with the enemy. Gamanu? Atahon? Yalla. A devout Jew, Rafi Haddad joined the prison service six months ago. When I uh, took a job and uh, uh, talked about it, about the uh, friend and family, and uh, asked me, what do I think you're doing? I mean, it's dangerous, you have wife, you have children. Don't you have a life? <laughs> Here, I'm one God, <laughs> around me something like 30, 40 people. They are already from the Hamas, from the Jihad Islami, everything. They kill people, they murder, they bomb, everything. So, let's hope that they know what they're doing and they're not going to do something stupid. Stupid for them, very harmless for me. For new guards like Rafi, the biggest surprise is the number of privileges prisoners are allowed. Inside a prisoner, they get, they get everything. Just get everything here. We care about, uh, about blankets, we care about clothes, we care about shoes, we care about uh, if they go to travel, to, uh, to visit, doctor, dentist, everything. They don't have it outside. They just, just, most of them don't have it. Almost all of them got no money, got, no, got nothing, economic the, the down, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Prisoners also arrive with their own prejudices about the enemy. Hussam Shaheen was a member of the military wing of Fatah and is accused of distributing weapons illegally and planning attacks on Israeli buses. He's yet to be convicted. I have been here since here and, you know, I have two friends here, you know. He, he's in prison since 17 years and he also here in, since 17 years in the prison, you know. And my friend there since, you know, uh, four years. I'm just for one year inside this prison. And I don't think so that there is a lot of change happened with the Israeli mentality of facing the Palestinian people. The Israeli mentality is still uh, built on power and the strength. And they are using their own power just, you know, to fight the, uh, the Palestinians. How do you still wage a war of resistance from inside a prison cell? Smiling. <laughs> by smiling, you know, and, you know, seeing victory. We will win. We will win the game at the end of the day. When a prisoner arrives, he's still highly motivated. He still has the instincts of a fighter. Most of them don't know the Israelis, just as we don't know them. I must admit, I didn't know the Palestinian side before I came here. In prison, they start to get to know us as Israelis, our culture, our language, our limits, the things that we as Israelis are willing to accept and what we're not. There's always a battle of wits between the prison service and the prisoners. Both sides try and test the other's limits. Dr. Yuval Biton has worked at Beersheva for nine years as the prison dentist. Between appointments, he does what he can to resolve any disputes that arise. These men weren't born murderers. 
These are people who did what they did, and then when you meet them in prison, you can't connect them to the crime. Of course, they have their justifications and we have ours. But it's very difficult for me to connect the actions to the individuals because they seem so normal. Israeli courts sentence on the basis of a life for a life. At Beersheba, many of the 1,200 Palestinian prisoners are serving multiple life sentences. Among them is a man Israelis regard as their most dangerous prisoner. He's kept in isolation 24 hours a day. Okay. Uh, first time I didn't know anything about uh, what he did and what his punishment was, but after that I read the paper and I saw how big, how, how, how very important, a very smart guy he, he, he was. And I said, those kind of guys was in the Holocaust. The same guys who kill people without uh, understanding what they're doing. I mean, no mercy, they didn't think about anything. That's the same. Uh, Abdullah Barghouti was recently given the longest sentence ever handed out by an Israeli court. 67 life sentences. As the chief bomb maker for the military wing of Hamas, he's responsible for numerous devastating attacks on Israeli soil. His targets included a cafe, a restaurant and a nightclub. Good afternoon. Abdullah Barghouti is held responsible for the deaths of 67 and the wounding of over 500 people. They are more bad than Nazi. They learn from Nazi in Germany. They are start to destroy us, thief the land, thief the everything, and what we respect from us. What we do, it is nothing. They kill more than 3,000 Palestinians. What we kill, around 1,000, who want this, this nothing. I'm not look like Gandhi. I didn't care about the shit, they call it Gandhi. Here, we don't care about what they say. We care about what happened for us. They destroy us, we must destroy him more. Because they start. The Holy Quran, he say, who start to destroy you, you should destroy him. Make him nothing. Look, uh, we are round in the circle, uh, in the same circle. We fight and they fight. We fight and they fight. There is difficult way to fight. There is a gun, there is the politica. It's, uh, they taken for the two way, but there is one, we call him the highway. It's the fighting way. The pumping way is the highway. This experience, it's good for me. I know I will get freedom soon. Maybe not today. After today, I will get the freedom. And I will be uh, one of the big politica man in, this pal in Palestine. When we decide to go outside, we will go. It's easy. Easy more than that. We will come outside. I will see my children, my family. And I uh, spend all my life in the beach swimming. I know that and believe that. And you will see, you will come to visit me again when I was in Ramallah, sitting in my jacuzzi. Just like outside the prison, there are a few hardliners who reject any dialogue with the enemy. But in here, they can be isolated.
A former submarine officer, Commander Ben Gal is in charge of a very different prison to Beersheba. He runs one of Israel's only two women's prisons at Hasharon. Sixty-one women are imprisoned here, all accused of crimes against Israel. They range from failed suicide bombers to those who supplied weapons or prepared explosives. Maintaining a dialogue between these Muslim women and the predominantly male guards creates a unique challenge for both sides. Cultural sensibilities can be easily offended. The Israelis do allow children born in prison to stay with their mothers until they're two years old. Some of them are mothers, some are unmarried, and some have husbands at home. It all influences their behavior. Women and young people are unpredictable. Emotion comes before logic. We never forget they are girls and women. But yes, they're also terrorists and murderers. As in all Israeli jails, the prisoners are allowed to elect a representative to speak on their behalf. Currently, the position is held by Amna Muna. To the girls, I'm more than their leader. I'm a friend to them, like a sister. On top of that, I help them in humanitarian and social matters. My name is Amna Jawad Muna. I received a life sentence in the prison uh, for uh, kidnapping and killing an uh, Israeli young man. A young man. His name is uh, Raofir Rahum. Former journalist Amna Muna is one of the most notorious prisoners in Israeli custody. Using an internet chat room, she lured a 16-year-old boy on a date where he was shot dead by two of her accomplices. I didn't intend that anyone should be killed. Killing another human being is very, very difficult. It's God who decides who lives and dies. And I don't think he chose me to carry out this act. I took a decision a long time ago not to regret anything so I could get on with my life. I don't have any remorse over what happened. We know Amna is no angel. I never forget she's a murderer and she terrifies the other prisoners. When Amna was on another wing, she used violence. If you go over to wing 12, you can meet prisoners who had hot oil thrown over them by her. They'll gladly show you their scars. We're talking about a murderer who's continuing in the same vein. Killers don't change their ways. In two months' time, I'll have been in prison for four years. Prison has taught me many things. I understand my enemy much better now. I have never had such direct contact with Jews or Israelis before. It's the day of the elections. As well as choosing a representative, the women are also electing committee members in charge of everything from physical fitness to intelligence. With only a short history of free elections in Palestinian society, this is a precious opportunity for the women to exercise free will. Throughout the historic struggles of the Palestinian people, democracy has always started in prison. In a small way, we as prisoners are setting an example, which is what our people need right now. Don't ever forget that prison is a totalitarian regime.
In all their dealings with the guards, they must operate within the rules we set. Any breach of this is considered a violation of discipline. Even though a representative is elected by the prisoners, I have the final say as to who it is. Amna wins comfortably. Her position is now unchallenged. It's a rare chance for the women to let off steam. I can see from their faces, the looks they give us, that they're not too happy about what's happening here. Right now, I can't control the girls' reactions. They've asked me several times to turn down what we're saying. Their basic goal is to control us, but they won't succeed as long as we stick together. The administration is watching us all the time. If it's not the officers, then it's the guards. As long as the officers agree to deal with her, Amna's negotiating skills will set the tone of the dialogue between guards and prisoners. The next few days will determine whether she's an asset or a liability. Deep within the vast Beersheba prison complex lies Eshel, the maximum security wing, where the most disruptive and dangerous prisoners are locked up. These are the men who planned the suicide bombings, rocket attacks and shootings that have claimed hundreds of Israeli lives. Most are serving multiple life sentences. With nothing to lose, all are still regarded as a serious threat to Israel's security. The ones we get here on Wing 4 are troublemakers. They are more of a problem than prisoners in other jails. This is a secure wing, where the senior leaders are gathered the sort of people who plan terrorist actions outside, from within the prison's walls, whether by telephone, or by letters, or smuggled messages. I have to be very vigilant for reasons of security, and also in the psychological war. Since they are leaders and mature prisoners, there are lots of things happening beneath the surface. I and the guards who work here have to be aware of everything that's going on. My name is Gilad Cohen and I'm 36 years old. I work here about six years, but here in this section three years. So I know it from the beginning. There is a war inside. There's, although it's quiet, an underground intelligence world, but it's, it's still war. They are very, very dangerous. Although they see, seem like not dangerous, but they are very dangerous, very clever. We are uh, working, as you see, without guns, very close to them. They are almost free inside the section. 15 seconds, or maybe less. I can be in their cells, hi hijacked. Not long ago, manager of Nafcha jail been uh, almost killed, almost assassinated. Knife 
in, in his stomach, almost dead. You know, that this is the, the situation here. In the corridors of Eshel, confrontation is kept at bay as long as guards and prisoners maintain a respectful dialogue. <laughs> I am Muhammad Mustafa Abu Jalali from Jabalia camp, Gaz Trib. I have been in jail since the beginning of 1991, 10th of March. They convicted me for murder Israelis and fighting the occupation. And I spent between eight to nine years in isolation sections till now. In 1990, soon after Mohammed al Jalala had graduated from nursing college, Israeli police and Palestinian rioters clashed in Old Jerusalem. Jews described the incident as the Temple Mount riots. Arabs call it the Al Aqsa massacre. 17 Palestinians were shot dead, and over 100 were wounded, among them women and children. Mohammed was called to treat the injured. I swear at that moment to revenge all this blood. Bloodshed. Me as a staff nurse, as a nurse, I have educated to give life, to promote life, to maintain the level of the health of all the people, in spite of their race and nations. But I went to Jerusalem and I stabbed four and injured eight. Mohammed's act of vengeance claimed the lives of four women, all of them civilians. They, they, they call themselves a prisoner of war. I don't see any war. It's just a terrorist act against citizens. When they hit soldiers, I have nothing to do. I, can, I cannot say anything about that. But when they come, go, uh, go on, on bus and suicide bomb inside the, inside the bus, inside the halls, it's, I, I will never understand that. Uh, we need يعني, all the news. <laughs> Muhammad is a member of the fundamentalist movement, Islamic Jihad. After 14 years in the custody of Israelis, he's learned that violence is not the only way forward. There's two types of struggle here in prison, the positive and the negative. The positive is attacking guards and uh, taking our rights by force. And this is uh, not suitable for us. We refuse it. We prefer the negative style. Because I'm the prisoner and he's the jailer, he has the strength he has the, he's stronger than me, he has the guards, he has the money, he has everything. And I'm here just to have my mind and my soul, that's it. The prisoners are highly organized and impose a strict discipline in their ranks. Islamic rules prohibiting drug abuse and homosexuality are enforced and fighting between prisoners is outlawed. Any mature person has to control his behavior. And we develop ways to control our emotions. Sometimes maybe I feel frustrated and feel pressure, high pressure. I can release this pressure by many ways, not by shouting on my friend, no. We have rules 
if you release the pressure in your brother or in your colleague or in your, in your friend and you harm him, you will receive hard punishment. These are the rules of prison life and most of the time they're respected. But when prisoners abandon them, the guards are quick to step in. A week after the elections at Hasharon Women's Prison, there's been a near riot. The guards resolved it by turning the fire hoses onto the prisoners. Amna Muna is accused of starting the disturbance. Having spent 18 hours handcuffed to the bed, she's now summoned to a prison trial. Commander Ben Gall will act as judge and jury. I'm <laughs> גם אתם הרבסתם לי, וזה צריך לשבור את הכבוד, אבל אני מצדי לא, רוצ, לא רוצה לשבור את הכבוד. רוצים להמשיך כמו שהיינו כל הזמן, ו... זה לא רק הסמל, גם סוערת נפגיעה? אני לא יודעת, אני, אני שמעתי. וגם על אש, מעלש, מים זה בריא, זה למזל. וגם שפכו עליי מים והרביצו לי, אבל זה קורה כל הזמן. אני מוצא את החשיבה על זה שסירבת לעמוד לספירה כשנדרשת לעמוד ולא אחר כך. הייתי בצינוק 14 יום. טוב, תודה רבה. חזרה לצינוק. כן. אין צורך לגבול אותה, אפשר להשאיר אותה חופשייה בפיקוח. אני מחזיר אותה בטלית הפיקוח בלי כבילה. We actually anticipated what happened. After she'd been re-elected to the leadership, we expected some sort of confrontation when she would show off her status and power. It could have been directed at the prisoners or the staff. Amna's position as the newly elected representative is already in jeopardy. Now she has time to consider how to repair the fragile peace. The situation is very complicated. It seems they've been waiting to do this for a long time. The way to solve the problem is not through force or any protest from us. It's only through dialogue. On some days, Israelis and Palestinians end up in stalemate. 
On others, the hope that dialogue can advance their cause sustains them. The elected representative of the maximum security prisoners at Eshel is Abdul Nasser Issa. His job is to win the small privileges that can make all the difference when you're locked up in these two-man cells. My name is Abdul Nasser Issa. I was sentenced 10 years ago to two life sentences and seven years. The charges against me were for attacking Israeli targets. Now aged 36, Issa was arrested while preparing to blow up an Israeli train. He was convicted of planning suicide bombings on two Israeli buses. Nine passengers died and 130 were injured. Issa's had little contact with his family since he was jailed over a decade ago. Of course, separation is difficult, especially when you look at those you love most, your father, your mother, your brothers and close friends. It makes prison that much harder. Now, some of them I will never see again, because, God have mercy on them, they are martyrs. Despite his imprisonment, Issa maintains the family tradition of resisting the occupation. Three years ago, he was convicted for coordinating the kidnapping of Israeli soldiers from his prison cell. As prisoners, we always try to work out the best ways to cope with our situation. It's complicated by the fact that the guards undoubtedly served as Israeli soldiers in Hebron, Nablus, Gaza and all the Palestinian territories. They may well have participated in operations which harmed my people. But we do our best to ignore this, so we can live as normal a life as possible. To qualify as a guard in Israel's prison service, you have to have combat experience. Many of the officers, like Chaim Weizmann, have fought in the Palestinian territories. From about the age of 17, I felt a need to help protect the state. I served for three years in the paratroopers, and immediately afterwards I applied for a job in the prison service. I was attracted to it because it's a security service and because I love the land very much. I love Israel. This is my way of contributing to the continued existence of the state. People may not want to hear this, but really it's a game of war in which they have the edge. We're always on the defensive to prevent them smuggling in mobile phones and planning terrorist attacks outside. They've got 24 hours a day to think. Twice a week, Weizmann, the wing officer, gets together with Issa, the prisoner's representative. <laughs> ראיתי אותה באיזה עיתון, ככה עיתון, כמו מי? תמונות מחזור. של מי? תמונה של מי? עיתון בערבית, מאיפה אני יודע של מי? תמונה של מי? שלך. אני עדיין לא יודע. תן לי להתקשר. תבדוק. <laughs> תוציא מהסליקים. לא, אין לנו. הטלפון לווייני, תתקשר. הבלפונים עכשיו, אין לנו בלפונים. מה אתה אומר? אין לכם? לא, בסדר, אין לי בעיה. לפי דעתי, האירועים שמתרחבים... Nothing happens spontaneously here. Everything is planned. I have to think what is behind even the most innocent request from him. It's a psychological war. It may seem harmless, but it's never as simple as that. There's always something behind it. Yeah. 
נפעם עם ספרי הקוראן, אתה לא יכול... יש קוראן בכריכה רכה. לא, אין. יש. בדרך כלל, יותר מ-90 אחוז... כל הספרים הקטנים שמכניסים, הקטנים, נכון, אבל הגדולים... עם כריכה קשה יש בעיה. אתה יכול לבדוק עם הזה, עם המשקיף. אני יכול לדעת מה, איזה מסר כתוב יש בפנים? אין מסר. מה אין מסר? אני אומר לך, יש בזה בעיה, אני כבר דיברתי איתו על זה גם. הוא אמר לתבדוק, להכניס את זה גם. דיברתי איתו על זה, זה לא כל כך פשוט. אבל... אבל נתלוש הספר, זה אתה מקלקל אותו. אבל פולשים בהסכמתם. לא, בגלל שאי אפשר. אני הייתי בביקורים כמה פעמים, אמרתי לגברת, את רוצה להכניס את הספר, בתנאי שנתלוש את הכריכה. למה מסכימים? היא הסכימה. למה מסכימים? בגלל שאי אפשר להכניס ללא הסכמתם. אם הם לא מסכימים, אי אפשר להכניס לספרים. שלא לתלוש, זה מקלקל, תאמין לי, זה מקלקל את ה... אני לא יודע, אין בעיה, אני יכול לבדוק, אני יכול לפתוח את הכריכה עם סכין ואחרי זה תדביקו את זה, אתם. תביא לי מה שלהדביק, אין לנו גם חומר, חומר הדבקה. אם אתה מאשר לי חומר הדבקה, בסדר. קח. לא, תודה. אז יכול להיות שנעביר אותו היום, את החבר שלך לאגף... חמש עשרה. איזה אגף? חמש עשרה, ש... עשרה. איזה אגף אתה רוצה? אני... אתה קובע, אני לא קובע. איזה אגף אתה רוצה, תגיד לי. לעשר, יאללה. עשר? כן. קיבלת. רק זו ההוראה שקיבלתי, עשר. ראית איך אנחנו קולעים? על אותו גל. בסדר, זה משחק פנימי, אפשר לשנות מרגע לרגע. ברגע שהוא יוצא לדלת, אני יכול להגיד לו גם אחת עשרה. בינתיים שיכינו את כל האשגרים לעשר. כן, הוא מוכן, הוא מוכן, אל תדאג. אני תמיד אומר לו את זה בפנים, שאני... אני תמיד אומר לו את זה בפנים, שאני... אני סומך עליך בעיניים פתוחות. אני סומך עליך בעיניים פתוחות. אני סומך עליך בעיניים פתוחות. שידע. אני חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה ואני חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה, לבדיקה, לבדיקה. אני חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה, לבדיקה, לבדיקה. אני חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה, לבדיקה, לבדיקה. אני באמת חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה, לבדיקה, לבדיקה. אני באמת חושב שהוא הולך לבדיקה, The morning after Amna's trial, there's a surprise for her and the women at Hasheron. The prison service has transferred 30 women from another prison here. All the women at Hasheron have been secular nationalists from the Fatah party. These new arrivals are religious fundamentalists from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. The groups have a history of bitter rivalry. The last time they were housed in the same wing, violence erupted. When we prisoners disagree amongst ourselves, we're distracted from demanding our rights and the officers get their own way. In the end, that's what they want. Amna's still in solitary and powerless to influence events. Both Amna's group and the new group have gained too much power and unity. By mixing them up will bring them together. There will be an exchange of opinions between groups. Perhaps it's in the spirit of democracy and we're helping them to make democratic decisions. I might even be declared a national hero by the Palestinians because I have helped create peace between the factions. As the first of the new arrivals is escorted onto the wing, the guards prepare for trouble. Once the Hamas prisoner is told she'll be housed with Fatah women on the same wing, she refuses to enter. For the second time in 48 hours, the guards prepare to turn the fire hoses onto the women. I'm not here, 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 I'm not
الافضل انكم ما تعملوها بس بتأبد في حد هون طيب انا بتأبد هون في حد مش هذا يعني في شيء بيهد بيهد شوي after an hour of negotiation and threatened with a soaking, the Hamas and Islamic Jihad women are finally persuaded to enter the cells. I'm sure there will be tension between the factions, about money, about the food they buy, about who will be the representative on the wing. It's a healthy tension that serves my interests, and certainly in the future it will serve other interests. For now, the hoses are put away. In the meantime, Amna Muna has been listening to the confrontation. News of the transfer hasn't improved her already jaded view of the administration. Gradually, during my time in prison, my view of Israelis had improved, but right now I feel it's going backwards. I don't want to say I feel hate, but it's certainly distaste. When I look at Israelis now, all the positive things have disappeared. The evil face has returned. Despite having been recently elected, Amna will now face a challenge for leadership from the other factions. But for the next 12 days, she'll be alone to contemplate her future and a lifetime of imprisonment. At Eshel, it's business as usual. Issa is still negotiating on behalf of the prisoners. Today, he takes the opportunity to raise a personal matter. He's relying on the dentist, Yuval Biton, to press his case. With Yuval's help, Isa wins a rare concession, a phone call home. <laughs> Issa's been told he'll have just 10 minutes on the phone. <laughs> ستك عندك ستك امك ايها ام عبد الله عفان السلام عليكم <تصفيق> كيف حالك اما <تصفيق> كيف صحتك <تصفيق> هاي سمحوا لنا بالاخر بعد اربع سنين سمحوا لنا نتصل من عند الادارة <تصفيق> كيف صحتك ان شاء الله بخير <تصفيق> عمر شو اخباره عمر عمر بقى ما روحش من السجن يعني كريم بروح ان شاء الله ان شاء الله الله كريم الله كريم يا ابو كدا طيب يلا كويس منيح المهم صحتك كويسه يا امه وبخير ومنيحه اه خلص. الله يعطيك الصحه الله يرضى عليك الله يحميك ادعي لنا دائما ادعي لنا ابو كدا هيو يا امه الله يرضى عليك الله, الله يبارك فيك بخير ابوك يا امه الله يبارك فيك يا امه 
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام كيف حالك يا ابا؟ والله 100000 مرحبا والله اول مرة هي بسمحوا لنا بحكي من عند الادارة من ملكة الادارة الحمد لله الله يرضى عليك كيف صحتكم؟ والله منيح جاك الشهر هذا لا مش كم مرة مش باستمرار هاي مرة واحدة حكينا لهم صلنا زمان مش حاكيين مع الاهل الوالدة مريضة الوالد كبير ضايل معي دقيقة واحدة طيب ادعوا لنا دائما بالخير ان شاء الله فرصة سعيدة مع الف سلام يا ابا مع السلامة مع السلامة مع السلامة اخي خد شوف سمحت ادبر يا يما بابا كين ما سنو اسلو بتاع تليفون ما غشو كين دبر هلا بمتيسه هم متوانين متزبون دي انا بقول له تليفون يا شباب يتر مشنه ما غشنا شلما يا تليفون بتاع شلو شو دبر خفشي مشخ سنه אז אתה יודע, שם לא יעבדו לך. עליי לא, מה, אני לא, אני לא חוקר אותו, אני רק מדבר איתו. לא, זה לא נכון. אנחנו לא חוקרים. אומרים שיש בלבונים, אבל זה לא נכון. יש, אומרים שמצאו בלבונים עם האנשים, אבל זה לא, זה לא בסדר, זה לא נכון. לא נכון. כן. אין פריזן, ישראלים ופלסטינים מנטיינים את הדיאלוג, בורן של נסטטי. It often falters and frequently breaks down. But most of the time, they do achieve conciliation. Outside the prison, the leaders of both sides try and do the same. Among the new Palestinian leadership are men who spent time within these very walls, where they learned the craft of negotiating with the enemy. Some of Beersheba's current inmates could be the next generation of leaders, if they're ever released. Once they've completed their sentences in an Israeli prison, they look at things over the perspective of time. On occasion, having met people like me and others, they'll come out and understand hatred doesn't lead anywhere. As they get to know us, it provides them with better tools to handle negotiations with Israelis and arrive at a solution. Maybe tomorrow we'll find peace. Ten years of detention gives you a real chance to develop yourself, your ideas, your points of view. If you didn't change for the better, you'd hardly be normal. Ten years inside has had its effect on building up my ideas and opinions. And that's true for many of my brothers, the political prisoners in the jails of the occupation. Palestinian prisoners are being discussed in the ongoing peace talks, but neither Hamas nor Islamic Jihad have agreed to take part. Have your say on tonight's show and explore a world of extra information, news stories and features by visiting our website at www.bbc.co.uk forward slash this world.